And it's gotta be Greetings, Spidey fans. This is Stan the Man Lee coming at you with color commentary where we give you views from a different side. We've got a great show for you today. There's going to be twists. There's going to be turns. There's going to be daring. There's going to be scary. Let's see if your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man can get out of this one. <laughs> That's my best Stan Lee uh, impression that I get. That man has such a unique voice. I've never been able to uh, in intimidate him. Excuse me, imitate him. <laughs> I don't know if I could uh, intimidate him either. He's got he's pulled a gun on Deadpool. So, but anyway, uh, we wanted to give a tribute to Stan Lee because we're going to be talking about him today. But of course, as usual, we're going to be talking about some of your favorite movies. We got two movies that we're talking about today. Uh, the first one is The Crimes of Grindelwald, or as I called it, Crimes of uh, Grimswald from the um, National Lampoon's movies, <laughs> the Chevy Chase. And we also have Widows, which I'll be reviewing myself because nobody else is strong enough. They didn't want to support black people and see Viola, Viola Davis, so I had to go in there and do my thing. Wow, <laughs> really? <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this show. Um, so on one side, I've got a, a no madge over there, and the other side, I got a can't spell. So we'll see who is who. <laughs> Mr. Danny Quick, which one are you, sir? A no madge or can't spell? I don't know. I can't. I can't see the. Uh, I can't see it down there in the bottom. But you know who it is. It's your boy Danny J. Quick. Um, yeah. So the crimes of Grindelwald. I am extremely lost. Maybe I should have watched the last seven Harry Potter movies and I would understand something, but <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm, I was totally lost. It, it, seemed, it was a good movie, like without knowing you know much about the characters. I mean, I recognize a couple names, but um, I, I, I feel more lost than 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 not here. So, uh, I mean, maybe y'all can y'all can tell me what's up. But um, I, I did enjoy it, and and I did want to support the black films. But I, you know, it's the holiday season. You got a budget. I got a budget. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, if it would have, if it would have, well, I'm not going to say if it would have came out the other way, I would have watched it, but uh, I just couldn't. So no excuse. Right. You definitely would have supported it if it were free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already, I mean, we're already taking a day out of the week to tell people about it. That's support right there. So, bye. Right there, you there, go. there you go. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlie, and, and which one are you, sir? Are you a nomad or you a can't spell? Probably both, to be honest with you. <laughs> Let's take it off. But, yeah, it's Chuck Taylor here. Uh, part of the KFH Party Easy. Uh, we do all types of events of all types. We actually did one this weekend. It was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, just check us out on Facebook, KFH Party Easy. But, yeah, I'm... I'm excited about talking about, uh, I guess, Harry, oh, I almost Harry, Fantastic Beasts, because I actually <laughs> never really watched any of them, and so I had to watch the first one, and then I went and saw the movie. I was like, oh, okay, I kind of want to see all these Harry Potter movies. And then I realized Harry Potter movies are like a million of them. Right. I'm like, it's like, I was like, I thought it was like maybe three of them. Like, I think I saw the first one. I was like, okay, I just watched a couple of them the day before. It's like, what the heck? Is it like seven movies? It's like, this kid looked like a grown man. He started from there to this. I'm like, is this Game of Thrones season nine with Harry Potter? I'm like, oh my god! I was like, yeah, I'm not watching this. Anyways, let me watch some football. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to give you my review on the first two uh, Fantastic Beasts uh, movies. I did catch both of those. So, but uh, yeah, let's let's get ready to go. I'm excited. So, uh, Charlie, you are, uh, are no longer our uh, nomad or can't spell. You are our local expert. So, uh, Danny and I may be referring to you now because there was a couple of times that I was a little twisted up. I saw Fantastic Beasts, but it's been a while since I've seen it, so I didn't remember everything. But uh, let's all go ahead and get all the Danny's questions, and that way you can uh, maybe jump in and, and fill out. So, uh, Danny, why don't you go first, sir? And uh, real quick, let me also mention real quick for all of our fans, because we're going to talk about Stanley, but I want to make sure we don't forget about this, that we are, of course, rocking our Marvel stuff to represent Mr. Stanley. 
Uh, if you didn't know, Loki is a creation, one of my favorite characters, is a creation of Stan Lee. And so is Mr. Killmonger over there that Danny is rocking. And uh, Charles just representing all Marvel all the time. Spider and there's Mr. Spider-Man oh, right there. And Hulk Spider -Man. and Iron Man. There you go. And everybody else. All right, Danny, go ahead, sir. Okay, so um, the, the crimes of Grindelwald. I, I understand, okay? I understand that Grindelwald is the bad guy. I understand <laughs> that he was locked up, okay? I understand. Locked up. He was locked up. Well, let me I, I understand that. <laughs> um, I understand that he wants to uh to to he wants the the wizards, the the um the magic folk of the world to to take over the world because honestly, why not? Because they have magic. They could easily just wipe us out, us us moguls. I, I, I thought about that so many times. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's not that's like that's really like uh like X Men like really like three uh, uh Professor X could kill us himself like why do we <laughs> there's no there's no uh no fighting back from that especially when most of the the Mogul world doesn't even know that wizards exist like it would uh, be a sneak attack um, right so I understand that um, um, Newt. Uh, what's his name? Sca Scamander, Scamander, um, Scamander, right? Newt Scamander. He's the new Harry. Po I mean, he's not the new Harry Potter, but he's the the main protagonist of the movie. Um, mm -hmm. I understand that um, that this is pre World War II, so they're talking about they. Some of them can see the future now, which is something that I didn't know that that wizards could do. They can see the future, um, I, um, but other than that. I really don't understand what's going on in the movie, so uh, I'm I'm kind of lost. I I I was enjoying it. I mean, the acting was pretty good, the visual effects were pretty good, like with the magic. Um, I was a uh, <laughs> I was actually uh, we we just y'all y'all reviewed the Hate You Give a couple weeks ago, but I just saw it. So um, when they had the wands and stuff, they kind of reminded me of that. The uh, oh yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. They, had, uh, they were the uh, you know. The the three they were in the the three person gang, um, with the with that with the Harry Potter crew. So it kind of reminded me of that. But yeah, I um I mean I think it was pretty good. I didn't get all the way through it. I'm gonna um to, I do want to finish it to see what it was that that um Johnny Depp was was trying to show them at the freak show, the um the circus thing. Um, mm -hmm. but uh I'm I'm kind of intrigued by that. So I do want to see unless one of y'all. Go ahead and spoil it for me. I'll probably still watch it anyway, but spoil it. Spoil it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Grindelwald. You know, I can see that they're trying to make him one of those uh, one of those villains with a uh, um that kind of has a point. You know, he wants to free all the wizards. Wants to, to I mean, not free them, but you know, say, hey, we should, you know, we should really own this world. This world you know uh <laughs> belongs to us we can we can do this we don't need to hide in the shadows and all that good stuff mm -hmm. um and yeah he has a point but please don't do that if wizards if y'all wizards if y'all can hear me out there <laughs> um please don't do that because you will absolutely decimate us so uh be kind i don't think we have any of these type of wizards <laughs> yeah go 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 ahead and uh, and call him your uh, your name, and that was that you were right on on point with that that analogy before. What you mean, X Men? Magic Magneto. Oh, magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that exactly. Magic Magneto. That's what he. That's what. That's what Grindelwald is. Yeah. Is that like when I saw him on the? Because uh, he's not. He doesn't really make a big scene in the first movie until the end of it. So he's mm -hmm. kind of hiding. So you don't really know who the bad guy really is. But when mm -hmm. he, yeah, on this movie, he's like, right, like, yeah, this is X Men. This is Mag that's Magneto right there. Dumbledore is is uh Charles Xavier, and he's talking about he can't go beat uh Grin was it Grin what's this, his name? I can't. I want to say Grinwall now or something Grindelwald. like that. Grindelwald. Grindelwald. <laughs> Mag uh, Wizard Magneto. Um. So basically, they're closer than brothers or whatnot, and 
one of them are, are they both have different sides of you know of what they're what they're toting over here. One wants to have peace with everybody and make everybody work together. The other one wants to have war and he wants to be on top and have everybody beneath them. You know, so they don't have to you know hide their powers or their true selves or things like that. So it's definitely like which one came out first? I'm, was it X Men came out before these books? Because I want oh, whoever it, came out first. Oh, before the books. Yeah. Oh God. Well, I mean, you know, you know, uh, the comic book character has been around since the '60s, so he's well, well so, before. So the wizard hey, people. I got a question though. Are Marvel people? Right. <laughs> I got a question. I got a question though. For these books, I know J.K. Rowling. She, you know, wrote the scripts, but these don't have books though, right? There, there's the Harry Potter series, and there are there books yeah. that go along with this series too. Yeah, Fantastic Beasts is a series too. They're not oh. just pulling it, but. No, I mean, I thought that you just wrote them specifically for the movies. I didn't know that they had books. I've never, I mean, I've never heard of this series before, so I didn't know. <laughs> boy, don't get, boy, Dad, don't get the, boy, don't get, don't get the Harry Potter people started, man. Boy, they gonna be going <laughs> ridiculous too. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, they gonna take but, uh, our channel down, bro. I think they're <laughs> almost as bad as the Star Wars people. <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> I guess. Well, go ahead, um, uh, Go ahead, Chuck. Since you uh, since you get the mic. Well, I guess just on the movie wise, I, the way I reviewed it, um, I think well, I guess me watching the first one and then going to see this one right after that, it was more okay. This movie is it's a pretty good movie. It's not as good as the first one, but I don't think it needed to be because it has a certain points it's trying to bring you to to come. I guess finish the the saga that they're gonna have with this. Um, because they're trying to, I guess, have another fifteen movies, uh, added to the Harry Potter collection. But basically, like the way it starts off, it's pretty exciting. I really enjoyed the, you know, seeing him kind of break out of jail right at the beginning and having having him basically using magic powers on each other. That was pretty cool. Cause like I was like, I always wonder like what they can do with these wands, like what type of magic abilities they can do. Cause they only always shoot little electric beams at each other when they fight. So kind of seeing right. them. Take each other's body or teleport out of things was yeah, pretty uh, cool. I was like, "Oh wow, okay, so they're doing some real stuff with this, but this magic, mm -hmm. um, not like uh, you know, Lord of the Rings. Oh, you're my pest. No, you're not. Wasn't doing that. <laughs> they was doing little spells actually, but um, it gets a little, I guess, kind of stale during the middle of this movie. A little, like I kind of <laughs> find myself like kind of. Looking around, <laughs> doing something else, and then like kind of looking back at the screen, like what's happening now? Where did we get? Who? How did he get there? It's like what's going on? Okay, so I kind of you you kind of like it's it's kind of like take you down like a trail, and you just get lost in the middle of the trail, and then at, the, <laughs> at like closer to the middle end, you find out you're like oh you realize where you're at, and you're like uh -huh. okay I'm right on track. Like okay, right. I thought I didn't know where that shortcut really led, but now it brought me right to where I, I thought I was going to be, and that's kind of how the the I guess closer to the end of the movie is when they start you know kind of revealing who people are, because you know they pretty have some pretty good reveals with some of the some of the characters with the bad guy, um, what's his name? What's the one that can turn into the spirit thing? Turn into the spirit <laughs> thing, the Oscura. This Thesis? year, yeah. What's your boy? I don't know. What's his name? Theseus. No, no that's Thesis the brother. Newt's brother. Theseus is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I told you, I'm. I was lost. I don't know. Yeah, man, but, you, man, you straight no magic over it, man. You a muggle. <laughs> the one that can turn into the obscure basically finds out that he's, I guess, somehow connected to Dumbledore. So he's. He's uh he's some I don't know who son or nephew who who he is they don't tell us that but you find that out at the end because like Dumbledore's are like shoot they're like the the legit people like the legit like the top echelon of wizards right so if you got that name you are it like you're the top but uh so basically we find out that's how he's so strong and how he didn't die as a child with all that power because all the other kids die. When they oh, okay. bring that crazy spirit out, it's because he's a Dumbledore. And I'm like, oh, who is this guy? And then we're trying to, it's like a lot of mysteries that are kind of coming up that kind of get you prepared for the next one. And that's why uh, Grinwall, was it Grinwall? 
Grindelwald. Yeah, Grindelwald. You can't spell. Yeah, <laughs> Grindelwald. Grindelwald. That's why he uh, really wanted that kid anyway, because he's going to unlock something in the wizard world so he can, I guess, destroy all civilization or basically be on top. Uh, so they, they have a lot of, a lot of people kind of turning their back on each other. You got the fat dude, uh, the big dude with the pastries on the first one, him and oh, him and the, the girl fall in love and she's kind of has him on a spell mm -hmm. to make her marry him, but she can't marry him because they have laws against wizards, marry humans. So she ends up going to the bad side and now they're, he's trying to save her, and she wants to go to the other side because she doesn't agree with them having to be separate. So it's kind of mm -hmm. seeing all these different people kind of play out. It's like, oh, well, there's some tough, just tough stuff going on here. So mm -hmm. and at the end, you start seeing some people get lit up. So they don't make it to that next movie. Just trust and believe. Uh, right. uh, Riverwalk <laughs> goes be down in that circus, in that little sanctuary place. Yeah, he yeah. has a fire demon from hell up in that mug, and he just oh, yeah. shoot. Yeah, he just be taking people out. No, no ashes, nothing left of them. They're just gone. So <laughs> you see your some sacrifice bet. in your best bet, particularly Danny. You don't know what's happening anyway. It's just start at the end of the movie. Just just start at the end. <laughs> oh, really? That's the good part right there. <laughs> you need to watch watch the first one, and then go back and watch this one, and then you really start understanding what's going on. And then you'll actually have some affection from the characters of you know what they're doing because some of them take some pretty pretty big lumps and you know sacrifice everything to save a few so i, I think it was pretty good um it wasn't as you know well put together as the first one um it wasn't they didn't bring as many fantastic beasts on this second one as the the first one like it was like maybe like one i think some like lion thing and yeah. some weird looking cats but i guess that wasn't really the point of this movie i'm assuming they were trying to Thinking the plot so you can kind of try to figure out who these people are so it can really build up the third movie to be like the uh this is for all the marvels. So I guess it kinda of, it kinda of reminds me of um the Hobbit movies. The second one, second Hobbit movie wasn't really the greatest. It was okay. But you know you know, the it really brought for the third one, so that's what I kinda of think this one's doing. But that's good. I took Tori's time. And your time. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, I, I I did a pretty good review in this. Maybe you'll check it out. <laughs> All right, man. So let me get into this. And I'm going to give you my pros and my cons here. And uh, let's see, here's my Google timer. Let me get that going here. All right. First of all, the things I liked about this movie, I really like Newt's commander. Like, he's, he's dude, bro. Like, even in the midst of other wizards, he kind of carries himself like he's weaker, kind of like goofy a little bit but when it comes down to it like he knows what he's doing like that detective scene where he was trying to determine what happened at the circus and he's throwing all this stuff around to see like what happened like i didn't see anybody else do that type of thing and then he pulls out his badger and the badger sniffing stuff it's like man like nude is, nude is cool man like he knows what he's doing so i really liked him um i love the beginning of this movie like you said that that escape was so awesome you know where he's uh um, what's his name? Grindelwald. You know, he's flipping in between where he is and where he isn't. And then, you know, how the dude jumped on to the uh, to the carriage from the beginning. Oh, man. Um, even how Grindelwald, <laughs> he picked up the, like, the little creature. He was like, <laughs> so needy. <laughs> and threw that mug <laughs> out the window like, really? <laughs> like, that, the beginning was awesome. The ending is awesome. Like, um, like you know, Charles was talking about with the fire demon and the decisions that they make. And let me just give it, give credit to Johnny Depp. I think he's an amazing actor. All the way through, his part is so believable to me, particularly at the end, the speech that he gives and how he's able to use people's emotions against him. Like he really, does, during that whole speech, he really doesn't do anything. And yet he's able to really inspire that crowd of people to to truly go out and, and, uh, and, kick some things off and then at the end then he drops that fire like literal literal fire <laughs> but uh man he's awesome i was very impressed because i had just seen two movies with him like i, I get really tired of seeing johnny depp as you know i'm captain jack sparrow you know like i just watched one of the Carib uh, pirates of the caribbean movies i'm not i'm not the biggest fan and i really i'm not a fan of him doing all this you know? and i watched another movie called transcendence 
but seeing him in this character so completely different than those other two, I was like, man, that's that's awesome. Um, interesting. I guess Dumbledore is is gay. I, apparently, that's common knowledge. If you guys didn't know, that's common knowledge uh, for Harry Potter fans. Like, uh, apparently, uh, J.K. Rollins had mentioned that, like, in a tweet or something like that. And, uh, I, you know, some people, there was a big uproar by some people, and some people like, oh, okay. But that was interesting. I, I didn't know that, that going in. So when they said, um, you know, you guys were just we're like more brothers. than brothers. Yeah, we were more, more than, brothers. than brothers. I'm like, well, I'm what's like, more okay. than brothers? <laughs> we know it's so, more than brothers. Broke bad yeah. so, Okay. All right. Uh, all right, Hugh Jackman Dumbledore. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> Uh, let me see. And Zoe Kravitz is really pretty. Let me just point that out. Did you recognize her as being the same girl that was in Ken? That was uh, her? Yeah, it's the same girl. No, I did not. I knew I've seen her on some movies. I was like, who is this girl? I've seen her on some stuff. The stripper girl? Know. Yeah, it's a stripper. Yeah, the stripper girl. Oh. Yeah. I, I think some of that is because they made her so seem so short. In this movie, like all all of the angles, they always had her against somebody that was taller than she was, you know. But in Ken, she always seemed taller and leaner, you know. In um in that, so I think that's a part of not recognizing her. Now let's get to the stuff I didn't like about this movie. Great mm -hmm. beginning, great ending. You really could have saved the whole middle of this movie, man. Guys, the pacing was so bad to me. It was just. After that exciting beginning, it was like, man, this nothing happening. Like it was like a detective story. Like they're trying to find credence and they're trying to help him determine who he is, but it didn't have any suspense. Like if you're going to do a detective story, you got to have suspense, and it it just wasn't any suspense at all. And then the mm -hmm. the plot twist, as far as credence was concerned, like that was so played out to me. Like credence was like, dude, I don't care if you kill me. Just tell me who I am. So dude told him who he was, and, and he was like, oh, man, all right, good. All right, you can go ahead and kill me. And uh, uh, Zoe Kravitz is like, no, nah, no, nah, that's not who you are. Like, oh. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, so I don't know who I am. I'm, I've spent this whole movie, and I still don't know who I am. And then your man is like, oh, you're, you're a Dumbledore. Where'd you get that from? Like <laughs> they spent they spent like fifteen minutes talking about two different two completely different backstories, you know. So you're like, oh, okay, and then your man is just like, oh, you're a Dumbledore, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> like no backstory on that. Like, come on, man. And just like you said, Charlie, like this movie is literally called Fantastic Beast Two. And there's the, the 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 creature that did the most was the doggone badger. <laughs> no, he wasn't a badger. He was a platypus, I think. <laughs> like, like he did the most, and the little cat creature. And like, what happened to the griffin? I think from the first movie, they didn't need him. Not, like it was so cool when he went his, on New York. Huh? Yeah, the griffin was, up in New York. Some people. Yeah, I mean, it was so cool when he went into his suitcase, and you got the chance to hang out with the creatures a little bit. And you see the owl, and he looks like he's about to, you know, to eat the guy. And then you just don't see them at all. Like, man. The center, the uh, CGI for this movie I thought was great. I thought there was a lot of great-looking characters, and uh, great-looking creatures and things, but they just didn't use them. You know, I was just, I was really disappointed by this movie being called Fantastic Beasts and not even really seeing that many beasts. I mean, freaking Groot, baby Groot did nothing the whole movie but get them caught. <laughs> <laughs> that's all he did. He like peeked out. And that was all. That was his cameo right there. Hey, right, exactly. I am Groot. <laughs> so <laughs> it, this movie was a pass for me, man. I really like Fantastic Beasts. I thought it was a a good movie. I I thought the pacing was good. I thought it was very interesting dive into the world of Harry Potter. Well, pre Harry Potter. And learning about the creatures and learning about all their rules. Like, oh, this creature, he takes up the size of anything you put him in. So let's put him into a teacup. You know, all of that stuff was really, really cool. This movie is just, it's just too much time talking and not enough happening. So it's a pass for me. Um, like so real a, quick before we get in, huh? It was like a, a Sherlock, it was like a, a Sherlock Holmes movie more. It was like a, kind of like a, one of them detective movies, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll that. It definitely has well, a different uh, feel. 
What part did you say that don't make no sense, Danny? Uh, when you said, uh, I don't know what uh, what some you said didn't make sense. Were uh, it's called Fantastic Beast, and you don't see any Fantastic Beast. Right. That, <laughs> that don't make no sense. <laughs> that don't make no sense. So, uh, real quick before we go in into our second movie. So, Danny, is that a pass or a fail or see it for yourself? What you think? Um, I'm gonna say see it for yourself. I'm actually more excited about the next movie you're gonna talk about, and I'm gonna request that you do uh, a, a, try to do a non spoiler review because I'm absolutely gonna go see Widows no matter what. Um, so and it seems like the kind of movie where I mean, of course, you know, I feel like I know what's gonna happen in the end. Viola Davis is gonna blast somebody away, Sarah Connor style, and get the revenge she needs. Um, but you know, try not to spoil the whole thing for me. Um, <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Charlie, pass the fail, sir. Um, I'm gonna say it's kind of like in between. I I, I don't want to give a fail because I I think the first and the second one are the, you got to link them up. If you're gonna watch the first one and you kind of are into it. Go ahead and check it out. But if you're not really into Harry Potter or Wizards or anything like that. You know, it's other movies out there that you probably want to check out. So it's not a definitely you got to go see this movie because it's not that great of a movie. But it's also a world, you know, building movie. You know, it's connected with the whole mm -hmm. universe. So that's kind of my thing on it. So it's kind of up to you. Up to yeah. you, what you feel. Watch this one when it comes out on Fire Stick or something. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's out on Fire oh, yeah. Stick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get into the movie uh, Widows. So as I was talk, as I was driving Uber the other day, I was surprised by how many people were not familiar with this movie. So Widows is a story of uh, Viola Davis, who is married to uh, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson is the head of a criminal organization, and he, um, in the midst of pulling off a robbery, he gets killed. Um, and then so her and the widows of the other um, criminals involved, they have to do what they have to do in order to to get the money themselves to me in a way it's kind of similar to set it off in some ways when you have four ladies kind of going through that transition in order to become robbers themselves so it's an interesting mm -hmm. movie the movie is directed by steve mcqueen uh, who's a brother and uh, that's where i'm going to start because as a director he made some really good decisions on this movie uh let me go ahead and put my four minutes in here there we go so um like, I wouldn't be surprised if this movie wins best movie for some reasons. He, hit him a, he had a lot of really cool things. Like, for example, there's a parallel, if you watch Danny, between what happens at the very beginning of the movie and what happens at the very end of the movie. It is an exact parallel. Even the people that something happens to, you know, something happens, something, you're like, oh, my God, that happened to him? Like, the person that it happens to in the beginning is is an exact parallel with the person that, that that same thing happens to at the end. I thought that was an amazing uh, story writing technique. Also at the beginning, you see them robbing, the, um, they're, they're pulling off their heist, but in the middle of that transition, you see the love between Viola Davis and, um, and uh, I want to say Hugh Jackman, Liam Neeson. And it's, it's such a cool thing because you see so much stress and so much violence. And then on the other side, you see so much love and so much calm. It's, it's really great as far as editing is concerned. There's another scene in there. This is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie. Um, there's a character who's running for politics. And he's very frustrated. And he's talking to his assistant in a car. And so normally you would, norm, almost every other time you've seen that, you car zoom in. Huh? Say again? Uh, I thought you were going to say uh, you were expecting a car crash. Oh, no. Um, normally the camera is inside the car watching them talk. But mm -hmm. the director chose to have the camera outside the car. You don't see their faces at all. You just see the car driving. And I was like, God, that's just so, it's such an interesting take on that. Like it reminded me of when you're watching the news and you're uh, listening to a person talk you know, but you can't see their face. So mm -hmm. you're really intent on what they're saying because you can't, you can't get any visual cues. I thought that was mm -hmm. interesting. But the part that you have to watch, and I missed this initially, is the fact that he is, uh, he's running for, I think he's for city council or something like that. And he has a particular ward that he lives in. But he lives on the edge of the ward where 
things are, are, are wealthy, but he's campaigning in the part of the ward where things are not so good. So you can see him, the car driving from the bad neighborhood to the good neighborhood. And that's why I didn't, I didn't catch that until he pulled up to his house. I was like, oh, I see what you did there. Okay, it was a really good uh, directing idea. Um, at the end, there's a cool mirror image between uh, Veronica, who's Viola Davis's character, and Alice. Um, who you'll know, you'll figure out who Alice is. And I really liked her character. Um, she really becomes stronger as the, the show goes. And there is a plot twist. And it is amazing. And everybody in the movie was like, oh, so you'll be excited about that. And there's another scene in there where you're definitely going to go, dang, <laughs> not necessarily a plot twist, but it's something you didn't know what happened. So you're like, oh, smack. Um, is that, that part cool. of the last trailer? Huh? Is that part of the trailer, that, that part of you my old snap? Nah, so nah, nah. I saw, you know, I, I, I know all about Daniel Kaluuya shooting people in the face. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't it. That's cool, though. Oh, That's cool. How is, he, how is he in the film? I'm going to get to that. That's in my cons. Oh, <laughs> uh -oh. Do you, man. Do you. My Questions later. One last thing. Uh, another director's uh, comment is that she has this dog um, throughout the entire movie. And what happens to the dog at the end, I'm, I'm not going to give it away. And it's not a big deal. It's not like the dog gets ran over by a steamroller roller, or does he? <laughs> but if you think about what happens to the dog, you'll, you will see the growth in her character. You realize, oh, wait a second, the dog symbolized something. And now with what happened to the dog, you're realizing, oh, okay, so she is free now. She has grown up. She's matured as a character. Okay, so I, I get it now. So directing, so many ideas were really good. But there were so many cons, man. I saw these two movies back to back. I saw Crimes of Grindelwald on uh, Friday and, and Widows on Saturday, man. And they were the same. It was great beginning, great ending, and the middle was so boring. Let me tell you something. The person that I saw it with was literally checking her Instagram <laughs> throughout the movie. I'm, like, I'm thinking she got an important text message coming in. Now she's looking at pictures. I'm like, you can't, you can't be looking at <laughs> Instagram during the movie. But, sure, but I mean, all right, Rashad, I see you. Yo, I'm Jay, man. I'm trying, I'm trying to get there, bro. I'm trying to get there, man. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I, I didn't blame her, man, because, gosh, Charlie, I know you'd have been on your phone, bro. I, I know that. No. I would have had, I would, I would had the screen brightness all the way down. And I would have been a fan doing my phone. Pacing is so bad. There's a lot of really good character development in this movie, but the character development is at the wrong place. Like, for example, Viola Davis has to convince these other ladies that they need to pull off a bank robbery of multiple million dollars. And it's just kind of like, okay, we're in. Really? Really? So you mean to say if I just walk up to the color commentary crew and it's like, listen, guys, we're in trouble. Well, actually, I'm in trouble. I'm trying to convince you guys that you're in trouble. <laughs> and like, listen, we need to pull off this deal. We need to rob somebody and, and get off with a couple multi-million dollars, like a couple multi-million. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. It's not like we can say, hey, man, if we just download this app, we'll get it. It's like, nah, man, we got to do this and put off this heist. And you guys have never done this before, but don't worry, I got a plan. Like, come on, man. That's, that is just, uh, it just doesn't seem it. <laughs> doesn't seem right. And, mm -hmm. Uh, Alice's character, like you see her make a transition, but her transition as a character happens after she decides to rob to get this money. It just doesn't make sense. Set It Off was a much better movie in terms of that as far as helping you to understand why these characters are doing this thing. You know, this lady's, her brother got killed and she got fired by the bank and you know, this person mm -hmm. and that person it's much better for us helping you to understand what happened. And then um, lastly, Daniel Kaluuya's character, he's good. Um, this, he's, there's nothing wrong with him. He is intimidating, but he doesn't do enough. Like, he's very important at the, uh, at the beginning of the movie, and then he just disappears for a while. And then he shows up again. You're like, oh, yeah. That's another part when you'll be like, oh, when he shows up again. And then he just dies. Like, he just... He dies. <laughs> just, it's so easy. He just, he's, like, really? It's like it's like you know, new predator movie where it's like, dude, just he's just dead. Like, come on, man, that was terrible. So, 
I would have to give this movie a pass as well. It was better than um, Crimes of Grindelwald, absolutely, because the twist in this movie was so great, and the ending is so good, but everything that you have to go through to get through the ending of this movie, I, I'm just going to give it a pass. So. Too much. All right. That is Widows. So real quick, let's go ahead and pop on over to let's talk about Stan the Man Lee. And I have a question, I think. Hopefully I have a question. I don't see what I'm talking about. So I want to pass it on over to Mr. Danny Quick, who is a comic book creator himself, and allow him to talk about Mr. Stan the Man Lee here. Some people probably don't even know who he is. There's there's no way that you follow us. There's no person that's watching our video that doesn't know who Stan Lee is. That, that's number one, because he was so impactful to the stuff that we talk about. Um, even today, we weren't even talking about uh, Marvel movies, and we brought uh, Magneto into it because of... Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, St Stan Lee, as a creator... Uh, like I was talking to y'all before, he really saved. He's really one of the one of the things that saved um, comic books, even you know, fifty years ago, forty years ago, um, when he was a young lad. I think what'd you say? He was thirty eight when he wrote Fantastic Four. Um, thirty nine. Thirty nine when he wrote Fantastic Four. He was on the verge of quitting, and um, and thank God he didn't quit. You know, uh, and here he is, uh, two thousand eighteen, and probably the most one of the most popular most famous writers and creators in the world um i literally have a stack of comic books right here on my desk look i got spider-man i got a bunch of indie comic books i got uh ghost rider spot more spider-man the avengers and x-men i got uh black panther i got wolverine versus the hulk I got Batman and Robin. I got classic, <laughs> classic X Men. This is this X Men comic was from nineteen eighty eight. It's like um, I got the main man Icon. Um, a lot of people don't know about Icon. Uh, Stanley didn't create Icon. It was Dwayne McDuffie. But uh, but still, Dwayne McDuffie, um, one of my favorite writers and creators. He died a few years back, but he um. He talked about how Stanley was influential to even him. Um, so, you know, um, the only thing I can say is, especially as a writer and as a fan, we try to, you know, pick up and keep inspiring people through our our creations. And um, yeah, um, and also he was a veteran. Uh, the young man, you know, Veterans Day was was um, last last weekend, and he was a veteran of World War II, I believe. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we appreciate his service to the country and to our fandom. So, um, absolutely. Tip of the hat and rest in peace to um, stand. The, stand. And I, I liked your uh, your uh, impression. I think you did a pretty good job with your impression. Mm -hmm. at the yeah, the <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's the closest I've ever come to doing it because I've never been able to to come close at all to it. I just couldn't. I just can't do his voice for some reason. So, <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> Cool. Is that all you want to say there, sir? Yes, sir. What about you, uh, Chuck Taylor? Ah, uh, Stan. Stan Lee. Yeah, that was – um. he's definitely – see, I guess I'll come come from a, another side of things. Cause I, I didn't really read a lot of the comic books, to be honest with you. So, like, what, the way I got introduced to comic – well, to the superheroes was more of the cartoons and things like that. So, kind of seeing him cameo – the cameo is really like, who is that old guy with the glasses? <laughs> I keep seeing him on like all these cartoons. I like, mm -hmm. and I was like, kind of intrigued. Like he's he's a funny dude, and like I would, like as I got more into comics and you know superhero the worlds of you know DC and Marvel and things like that, um, I was I was introduced to Stanley. I was like, oh okay, he's pretty cool. And then of course you know when Marvel came out with the actual movies. Um, He's become like epic with all the cameos. So he's like the cameo guy. Like, all my kids mm -hmm. know that's the old guy on all, all the movies. So when I told him that the guy from uh, Stan Lee died, he was like, Who's Stan Lee? And they like, And they saw the picture. He's on all the movies. He mm -hmm. died. So they were all torn up, you know, you know, because oh. they recognize him from, you know, all the movies that they grew up watching. And I, and I watch and 
I see him cameo on everything, you know. And, you know, so we've seen him on the television side, and now that, I guess, comic books and superheroes are really more the mainstream now, they're really hip, and it's not a nerdy thing more. It's more like, you know, it's like the cool thing. You know, the gear is, is cool. Everybody rocks it. Everybody goes see all the movies and stuff. The, the top um, celebrities are in the movies, and Marvel just makes brands. So, and he's the creator of it. You know, he's the one that bit, was there when they weren't making any money, when they went bankrupt and they had to sell things off. I mean, just kind of seeing like a person, basically his dream and all his, all his thought and all his energy he put into something just fall and fail. And basically kind of seeing him not giving up and seeing where it ended and how many people he touched is amazing. So I know they mm -hmm. definitely need to put a movie together and, because that's an amazing story. Like, just hearing, like, wow, your whole dream basically got crushed because you thought you were robbed, but then you made a couple of bad mistakes, and that really cost you your whole business. And, I mean, I mean, that was – and then he comes back to what he is now. Like, now Marvel is, like, the top grossing brand in the world, mm -hmm. like, for the, like, last 10 years, you know? So that's – and and that was because of him and, and his writers that he, that he worked with um, – you know, so I definitely think that he's made an impact on a lot of lives, not just in the comic book world or the nerd world, just in the world itself. You know, from little kids to grown people to old people, every he's influenced people in so many different ways. So I know that's going to be missed. And every time I see Stan, he makes me, he kind of like brightens up your day. It's like you see him in a movie or you see him on a, on a picture or something like that with the shades mm. on and his same look, even like when I saw when um, he was sick in the hospital and things, like how he was just always so happy, you know, always happy with life and wanting to share and, and build other people up. It was like, wow, this guy's inspiring. Like He's not like, right. you know, just focus on himself. Like he's always looking to help other people get better. And I mm. like the picture Tori showed me um, when he went to see Stan Lee. And, like Stan Lee's pretty old, guys. Like, yeah, I would. I mean, like we gotta think about this. Like, if I'm ninety something years old, I'm not coming to Comic Con and nothing about <laughs> people hugging me and touching me. Right. That's something that he loves to do. He loved to be there. He loved to, you know, you know, be around the fans and just he give all everything he had to him. So I, I'm very impressed with the man. He's awesome. So I'm glad he's able to inspire my cousin. To keep going, he got lumberjack. Look at all those, those comic books back there. So he, we might have, a, might be talking to the next Stan Lee right here in a couple, That's like right. you know, forty years. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, if it don't we'll work see. out by the time I'm forty, I'm done. There ain't, <laughs> there ain't, ain't gonna be no resurgence. It's, it's a wrap. <laughs> no research. Okay. They'll sell off the properties and then make billions on them and bring yeah, them back got, to us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they got that, that patience that family had, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I really respect you, Stan. Thanks for, you know, being, uh, you know, a pillar in the, with your life. Uh, you did a lot of great things, and I hope everybody continue to, you know, take what you, what you brought to this earth and move it forward for the best. All respect to the legend. Respect. <laughs> so, here's a question for you guys, everybody that's watching. What do the following... Oh, real quick, uh, Daniel, did you show your picture? I don't think um, you did. I got my, my picture here. Me and This is the picture that Chuck was talking about. Me and uh, Stan the Man here from uh, NC Comic Con, or Heroes Con in Charlotte. This was 2012, so he was 89 mm -hmm. at that time. So... He was already um, old. Let yeah. me tell you, man, that's a great picture. That is like some of the best copying and pasting I've ever seen in a picture. Yeah, I photoshopped pretty well. Do, do pretty good photoshop. <laughs> let me ask you something. Uh, all of our viewers that are watching, what do the following actors have in common? <clears throat> Wesley Snipes, Chris Christopherson, Patrick Stewart, Sir Ian McKellen, Hugh Jackman, Haley Berry, Toby Maguire, William Defoe, James Fraco, J.K. Simmons, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Garner, Michael Clark Duncan, Lawrence Fishburne, John Travolta, Dolph Lundgren, Louis Gossett Jr., Nicholas Cage, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, Peter Dinklage, Robert Downey Jr., 
Kenneth, I mean, uh, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Terrence Howard, Jeff Bridges, Paul Bettany, Don Cheadle, Sam Rockwell, Charlotte Johansson, Ben Kingsley, Guy, Rich, uh, Guy Ritchie, Chris Evans, Hugo Reeving, Haley Atwell, Sebastian Stan, Anthony Mackey, Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Anthony Hopkins, Jeremy Renner, uh, Ryan Reynolds, Zazie Beats, Terry Crews, Paul Rudd, Michelle Pfeiffer, James Spader, Elizabeth Olsen, Aaron Taylor Johnson, mm -hmm. Andy Serkis, Martin Freeman, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Wong, Chaz McBoseman, Chad Wick Bozeman, Michael B. Jordan, Lapita, uh, mm -hmm. whatever last name is, Danae Niego, Danae Guerrero, Daniel Kalua, yeah, sure. right, Walking Dead Lady, For, uh, Forrest <laughs> Whitaker, Angela Bassett, Letitia Wright, Winston Duke, uh, Sterling uh, K. Brown, uh, John, was it John Berthel, Charlie Cox. What do these people all have in common? They're all actors. Every, every single one of those has been in a Marvel movie or TV show. And that's not even everybody, because I didn't even mention you, uh, any of the characters from, uh, from Luke Cage. Um, oh, Lou Ferrigno, I didn't mention him. It's so, uh, the late girls uh, from um, Iron Fist, you know, we don't need to mention him. Jessica Jones, I mean, <laughs> Howard the Duck. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. If you look at that, you look at how many actors uh, the how and the world of entertainment has been affected by Marvel and Marvel comics. Now let's let's be real here. Let's show everybody understands. Stan Lee didn't start Marvel comics. It was it was well it was there well before he was. It was called Timely Comics, and then they changed the name when he got there. You know around that time, um, and he didn't even create Fantastic Four, which was their like first really big hit. They already had Captain America. They already had Namor. But around that time when uh, Fantastic Four came out, like DC was like destroying them. <laughs> and he was about to quit. And then he came out with this character, uh, this family of characters, the Fantastic Four. And it wasn't just like, hey, I'm Superman. I come in and save the day and I'm gone. You know, but a, a, a family of characters that have real issues. And Spider-Man, you know, a nerdy guy who had real issues. And then he fought for equality. You know, when you're talking about introducing characters like Black Panther, he introduced Black Panther before the Black Panther Party even came out. And he introduced that character. This is the first African American, excuse me, the first black character in mainstream comics. You know, um, I mean, he introduced him at a time when that wasn't the thing to do. You know, then uh, he introduced Falcon, Sam Wilson, the first African American superhero in 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 comics, in mainstream comics, and the X Men. You know, based off the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King and um, uh, Malcolm X. I mean. Just an amazing guy. He worked with inc incredible people. He was the one that was, you know, helping to to steer the Incredible Hulk TV show that came out years ago because they wanted to make the Hulk red because, you know, that's that symbolizes anger. <laughs> you know, I mean, all all throughout this time, you know, he was pushing to get uh, comics into Hollywood, and they just fought him. They just would not do it. They said, no, comics don't belong in, in Hollywood. It wasn't until Howard the Duck, and then really Blade in 1999, so you're talking about decades and decades and decades later, that Hollywood would finally start to become accepting of some of the Marvel properties. That's a lot of pushing, man. So, And this man is now, you know, Marvel, uh, the MCU has been great really in the last 10 years. So this man pushed all the way until he was 85 years of age. And of course, it wasn't all him. And also he left Marvel for a time, but he was still the spokesman, you know, the representative of Marvel. And, you know, to see his dream come true, that's inspiring to me. You know, I have a company where we sell music and instruments to march bands all across the nation, which I didn't mention earlier. So I'm saying that now. And I want to be like that. You know, I want to be able to throughout what happens, I want to be able to push through until, you know, my company is recognized, you know, nationwide for, be, for doing the things that we're doing. I want to have the patience of Stan Lee and the, the personality to, to be the role model, the person that's standing out front for my company, you know, and any other. And with color commentary, you know, same thing. You know, I want us to, to be able to, to push through regardless of the subscribers or the viewers or any of that type of stuff. I want us 
to be able to push through to see our dreams achieved, man. And that's what Stan Lee did. And the man died a multimillionaire. You know, you talk about a man who wanted to quit, wanted to go back to using his real name, which is Stan, Stan Lee something. I can't Lieberman. remember what his last name is. Stan and, Lee. Huh? Stan Lee Lieberman. He wants to get out of that. And this man, his wife helped him to stay in and he died a multimillionaire and an extremely well-recognized person. I wish he could have made more money off of his characters, but hey, you know, still, because, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that Robert Downey Jr. is making <laughs> multiple times the money playing the character that he created. So, uh, Daddy, you're going to make sure you get your contracts right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan be playing uh, Ace Blade. Just make sure that you uh, get the contracts in order. Hey, I but, just um, tweeted from yesterday, so we'll see. There you go. <laughs> Last thing I'm going to say, man, is I just remember him uh, way back in the 80s, man, watching um, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And I, I didn't know who Stan Lee was. I just heard his verse. Hey, this is, hey, Spider-Friends, this is Stan Lee. You know, we got a great story for you today. Spider-Man and Firestar. And I, and you know, just his voice was just so captivating to me. You know, and then when I started getting into comics, which came later, I recognized, oh, that's the same guy. So... Uh, hats off to you, Stan Lee, for everything you did, man. You're a true inspiration, and thank you. Uh, anything you guys want to say? Part closing shots, uh, Charlie Taylor. Uh, no, it was a great show. Um, like I said earlier, uh, check us out. I uh, can't face party easy on Facebook. I uh, do parties of all kinds, all type of events. But yeah, I, I was definitely, uh, definitely had a great time viewing these movies, and much respect to Mr. Stan Lee. And that's about all I got for today. Next Good time. stuff. I saw that we had another viewer real quick, uh, Miss uh, Tracy Jackson, who is a uh, who is an an author herself. You know, and so I hope she's inspired to do that same type of thing to continue to create characters that are you know outlive outlive even her. I think that's the greatest dream of, of any of any uh, author or creator. Danny. Um. No, nah, I had I had a great time, y'all. Appreciate y'all having me back on. Been real busy uh, with the comic book stuff and and with the holiday stuff in general. But if you want to uh, follow me, you can follow me at the Ace Blade on Instagram and Twitter. Um, that's probably the best way to get to me. And uh, But what is it? Hold on. Wait a minute. What's my catchphrase? Oh, but until <laughs> next time, stay vigilant, my friends. I'm out. <laughs> I got it. Has it been that long? <laughs> been that long. <laughs> Oh, man, this has been our show. If you're watching our show on YouTube, make sure to go down to the comments and to tell us what you thought. Tell us how we're right. Tell us how we're wrong. Do the same thing on Facebook. If you're watching us on Facebook, subscribe <laughs> to, uh, to YouTube or else, we, as we always say, you got to subscribe to survive. Uh, and of course, blah, 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 some other stuff. Uh, this, of course, is Color Commentary, where we give you views from a different side. Expect us! Excelsior. Jesus. <laughs> I'm doing Harry Potter, man. Harry Potter. Oh, expect us? Yeah, I was lost. <laughs> and it's gotta be That's the only thing that's soothing my soul Turn on the TV to power